Hello, everybody. My name is Radovan. Hello, everybody. My name is Anne. And we will have this series of short videos where we give an overview over the lessons. And in this one, we talk about uh, the social coding and software licensing lesson that we have in, in uh, our code refinery workshops. So it's a bit different from the other code refinery lessons in the, in the sense we have slides. It's not a code along lesson, no coding. Um, so if we go to the GitHub repository, it will uh, have a slightly different structure. Um, yeah, so there is a, so the, the slides, it's actually a markdown file, talk.md. And from this markdown file, we produce these, these slides because it's a topic where it's not so easy to do a code along. So we thought uh, we would go for the slides format, but uh, we really, uh, there are a couple of group discussions and um, where we where we can discuss together either in the room or we discuss through this collaborative um, document where we ask questions and we ask our learners to give their comments and ideas. Yeah, so I think in the guide is probably explained in details about this uh, different uh, mm -hmm. parts and um, different objectives of the of the lesson, which I, I can show here. In this one, uh, we are discussing these three main part, social coding, licensing, and software citation. But I think that if we summar summarize the lesson, it's mostly about derivative work and how to make it possible. Yeah, that's really a good point. I think that's really the core is derivative work and both to make, to make derivative work possible so that others can change the code but also how to, how to make derivative work ourselves. And often we do that even without noticing. And I think it's really good to be aware of it, what it means and how to enable it, how one can accidentally limit it. Yes, so in the, in the social coding, the only thing is probably remind uh, yourself to, to give the definition of social coding because I, I sometimes forget and then uh, I take it mm -hmm. for granted, but then we have comments sometimes on questions, but what do you mean by social coding? So mm -hmm. don't skip that one. Um, otherwise, uh, uh, important, we have this group work where that's what we discussed before. It's not only slides and talking, it's a group discussion. And I think this is nice to have uh, spent quite a lot of time on this group discussion at the beginning, uh, especially if we have a Zoom, um, online uh, workshop mm -hmm. to dedicate 10-15 uh, minutes where people they can really discuss why they would share or why they would not share. Yeah and then we discuss these and learners really liked that. Uh, that like last few times we tried it it was really a lively discussion on the document and many good ideas for so first we collect these thoughts from from learners and then we we have a couple of our own thoughts here on the slides but, but very often these are very similar. And it's, it's nice to see that these really come up. Yeah, so mostly the next slides, usually we can nearly skip them mm -hmm. because this is the outcome of the discussion. Uh, so we can take one or two points maybe uh, to highlight and give some, uh, some experience from, uh, from your own software development experience or from a colleague. Yeah, so then we talk about how to get credit and motivation for sharing. But again, it's so much nicer if this comes up in the shared document rather than uh, through the slides. Yeah, and I think we, the second part about licensing is uh, quite very short. Uh, yes, we uh, give uh, like an overview, but we don't give any recommendation of uh, which license to choose. I think this one is the only license where we present the different, well, the taxonomy of software licenses but we don't really go into any details. We have this other document, uh, we have this other slide deck in the same yeah. GitHub repository. Let's shake, go back here. And, and we normally don't have time to go through it, but it can be good to know that there is this uh, slide deck, which, um, so this is the underlying markdown, but then somewhere yeah. else are the generated slides. So there we explain, uh, software licenses at, by using the example of baking a cake and making I changes to the recipe. If we have the link here, maybe we should add the link here. Yes. 
But it's usually quite nice uh, to give as a reference. And I think we have in the presentation the link. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this one here. And yeah, the, I think this one goes then to the slide deck. To the slides I was showing as a markdown. And this is really a quite comprehensive way to explain the different types of uh, licenses. So nice to have maybe for later uh, when they need to choose a license. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a final part, which is for uh, software citation, uh, yeah. which is how to make it easy to be cited. I, I like this part quite a lot because you never know uh, how to cite a software. Uh, at least I never know how to cite a software. Mm -hmm. And having this file uh, is really great. So I would recommend uh, everyone to, to have it. And here we connect them to the reproducibility lessons of Zenodo. Uh, we also discuss here yeah, there are different journals where I can uh, publish a paper about focusing on the software. And we give some practical uh, recommendations for a repository to always give a recommended citation of how do you want to be cited but then also yes. uh, to place a license file in there so to make it really clear that uh, others can uh, maybe take it change it publish the changes to enable uh, open science yeah and uh, the fact that a uh, software can be uh, can have a dui uh, it's, uh, it's usually quite new and then they will uh, do it themselves as part of a code refinery lesson mm -hmm. later in the workshop and it's one of the really take home messages to uh, think about derivative work but also to make the code citable and we we show also in a different lesson that it takes very few steps uh, make your code citable or uh, also persistent so that it, it it is it can be archived and it doesn't get lost and then one can also measure or uh, one gets some metrics for, and one can document uh, impact and hopefully get some credit. Yeah. And then we closed with these conclusions and discussions and we really encourage them, learners to think, I think these are impos important questions uh, about code ownership, about derivative work, uh, about really thinking uh, how to share software and how to make it uh, more visible, reusable, useful for for others, and how that can how that can benefit your own research. Yeah, yeah, and usually I think this is where they can start to relate to other uh, code refinery lesson, and they can also match it to what uh, they are developing if they are developing mm -hmm. a software, and really say, oh yeah, so I can do this, I can do that can add documentation and I can add a license so then I will have contribution so mm -hmm. it's quite nice but really good to not only go through slides here in a kind of a monologue but really good to have I think this lesson is really successful if there are many discussions and if yeah through or the document or in our life yeah so we have a few exercises which we have indicated in the slides where you can stop and uh, make a ask for contribution from uh, from learner in the HackMD, but you, you feel free to, to have more discussion, like informal discussion, if you can. Yes, I think that was a good overview. Anything we forgot to say? I don't think so. All right, then thanks, Anne, and uh, thanks everybody for listening and watching. Yes, thanks, Radevan.